hello there, and welcome to another episode of Scouting 5, recapping scouting news from around the world for the week of September 20th, 2021. I'm Scouter Ken, and I am once again recording from St. Albert, Alberta. The Delmarva Council of the Boy Scouts of America, and that's Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, I believe will be honoring Vance Kirshner, who is the CEO of Labware Incorporated, as the recipient of their 2021 Citizen of the Year Award, which happens to be the BSA's highest community honor. The award ceremony will take place on October 19th. Kirshner will be honored in a celebration at the Obrod Estate near uh, Wilmington. Kirshner is receiving the award to recognize his community leadership and service as a role model for youth. The event also serves as a fundraiser of sorts. Funding provided by the event will go on to support a variety of scouting area programs throughout the Delmarva Council, including workforce development programs for low-income youth, STEM and conservation programs, and more. Tributes from friends and former colleagues have been flowing in for one Chris Garrett, who has been called a father for international scouting in Western Europe. A British national, he actually spent most of his adult life outside of the UK. He served in leadership roles for Worldcom Europe and then 3Com Incorporated in California. He was a facilitator, a coach, and a trainer for leadership, project, and change management. But he was probably best known for his volunteer work with the scouting movement. He served as a district commissioner for British scouts overseas from 1993 to 1999, this in Luxembourg. He chaired the executive committee for the Northern Europe District of British Scouts Overseas from 2013 until his death, and he was also a scout leader with the Telestar Group from 2003 to 2013. This long-term commitment led him to being awarded the Order of the British Empire, among other things. He received the OBE from Queen Elizabeth in 1996 for services to the British community in Europe. And according to scout leader Lynn Frank, evidently with the Telstar Group, Quote, Chris was like a father for international scouting in Western Europe, especially Luxembourg. He was our little bit of Lord Baden-Powell. His work as a volunteer touched the lives of thousands of young people, boys and girls, over the years. On our last meeting three weeks ago, we were still discussing the merits of Badge Glue and his intention to visit the next Telstar Scouts group camp in October. He had made a promise to do my best when joining Scouts as a small boy, and this he did till the end. End quote. So... I debated whether to include this next story in the episode, because alcohol and scouting are definitely not something that mix in a lot of places, Canada included. But it's just such an interesting story that I figured I'd share it anyways. Three scouts from Garstang in the UK are seeking funding for a trip to build an education center in Africa. One of them, George Pollard, has come up with an interesting, let's say, fundraiser to uh, help finance his trip in this expedition. He has to raise just shy of 2,000 pounds to fund the three-week volunteering expedition, and to move himself a little closer towards this goal, he has arranged a gin and ale night. So, on Friday, October 1st, from 7 p.m. onward, uh, the scouts, George and his fellows, are hosting a charity night at the Keppel Lane Scout and Guide Hut in Garstang. Ticket holders will receive a drink upon arrival and then four additional drink tokens, which can be exchanged with the Stable Yard Distillery or Avid Brewing Company, both of whom will be in attendance that evening. The night will feature talks and also snacks, including cheese boards and sweet treats provided by local cheese and dairy providers. Uh, cheese and bakery providers, sorry. <laughs> All of the money raised will go towards the fundraising total. Evidently, tickets are £20 and available by email or text, and you can click through to the article for details on how to contact George. So, a key hearing began this week in the ongoing Scouts BSA bankruptcy-slash-abuse case. Judge Laura Sieber Silverstein convened the hearing to consider whether a disclosure statement outlining the latest reorganization plan by Scouts BSA contains sufficient details to ensure that abuse claimants and other creditors can make informed decisions on whether to accept or reject it. Judge Silverstein must approve the disclosure statement before the Boy Scouts can send out ballots for abuse claimants and other creditors to vote on the plan. The hearing is expected to last for several days. It began with attorneys arguing over a number of issues, mostly involving the 251 local Boy Scout councils, which run day-to-day operations of scouting across the country. 
as well as chartered organizations such as churches and civic groups that sponsor local troops. And there's been particular concern from some of those sponsor groups. Uh, In particular, the United Methodist Church has said that the settlement could potentially affect as many as 5,000 of its U.S. congregations, leaving them susceptible to lawsuits by survivor claimants. Attorneys for abuse victims also made it clear from the onset of the bankruptcy proceeding that they would go after properties and assets owned by local councils to contribute to a settlement fund. And critics of the disclosure statement have argued that it needs to contain more details about the restricted and unrestricted assets of each local council and how those values compare to what each council is proposing to contribute into the fund. And that is all the news I have for you this week. Thank you again for listening, and until next time, be prepared. Be prepared.